Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Brendan Hauser with Evoke Bike. So it is hill climb season, and we had a great question in the Discord that I want to highlight. And also, if you follow us on Instagram, you saw the reel I just posted with Tom Bell's hill climb guide that is fantastic. I highly recommend you check that out. So let's jump right into this. Hill climbs, you know, they're 90 seconds to 25 minutes. 25 is very long. So we know the goal is to ride above threshold as much as possible without accumulating a ton of fatigue and metabolites. Lactate, which is created by glycolysis when you're going over threshold, can also be used as fuel if your aerobic system is well-trained. So we're going to talk about that. And this development is probably the biggest goal that you have in your training, but we're going to talk about the top four physiological things that you need to train in order to crush hill climbs, but also go get the Strava KOMs, do better at prologues. I'm thinking uh, Green Mountain Time Trial, Joe Martin TT. So let's jump into this question that this athlete had posted. I just finished a three-week VO2 max block, and I'm now going into a rest week. After this, I have one week before my first hill climb, which will then last for a six-week series. What are people's thoughts for the plan during this six weeks outside of the events themselves, which are most likely going to be three to eight minutes long in the UK? I'm currently thinking one midweek VO2 max workout and then just as much Z2 volume as possible in between that workout and the event. I'll be ending my season after these six weeks. Thanks. So my initial response to him was, remember, any reply that he gets is snapshot coaching. That's what I call it because we don't know him as an athlete. We don't know, is he very anaerobically gifted? How is his aerobic development? What has he been doing before? All we know is he just went through a big three-week block of VO2 max workouts. So I said, hey, you've done a bunch of VO2 max work, which is great for hill climbs. Three weeks is a lot. So now maybe just do one of those every other week. So do one race, do something different race, hit the VO2 max race, but it's just, it's a lot. So be careful with that. The lactate clearance work that I've talked about a ton this whole year is something that could get him the VO2 max training through the slow component, but you're not going full tilt, the mental and physical strain that VO2 max requires to get adaptations. The last piece how is his anaerobic capacity and stamina? The max watts, but then also how long can he hold them for? The watt prime. You need a big capacity for hill climbs, so that might need development. But that's a balancing act, and we'll talk about that. So remember, the highlight of this whole video is you're riding entirely, almost entirely above threshold. There might be some course aspects on the terrain where you would dip under so that you would have more watt prime or anaerobic capacity to use but that's a that's for a different video i guess that would be for a pacing video when we are creating energy we're using both the aerobic and anaerobic system so you need a large anaerobic capacity i've said that 50 times but you also need a large aerobic capacity that's going to allow you to reuse things like lactate to create energy a very, very quick review, the anaerobic pathway produces the high amount of energy, but very quickly. And so the when we use it up and we're getting towards the end of it, that's the, oh crap, I'm about to have to go below threshold to recover. The four biggest physiological determinants that I see for your success in hill climbs is number one, your aerobic capacity or VO2 max. This creates the most energy with the fewest fatiguing metabolites and it also, as we've mentioned before, uses lactate to create energy. Number two, your ability to produce energy anaerobically, both your maximal wattage and also how long can you hold that wattage? How do you know if you don't have a big enough anaerobic capacity? One thing that Tom mentioned in his guide that I really liked is your five minute and 20 minute power very similar. If so, you can tell you don't have much anaerobic capacity. You can also use other metrics like FRC in WKO5. You can use Watt Prime in Golden Cheetah. There's other ways to measure this. I don't know if intervals.icu has it in there. I think you have to manually enter it. Number three, I think muscular strength. This is why I like doing the still the classic five by fives where you're not trying to just work the VO2 max system by heart rate, but you are working on pushing raw watts. But why five by five if you're just doing a one-off effort? 
the, if you can do five efforts, 25 minutes of work, I truly believe you are going to get stronger for that first and second effort. Get in the gym, get stronger, get the strength plan that we put together. It will help you. Now, if you're just going into the hill climb season, that would be for next season. Um, maybe this video should have come out in July, but it didn't. So we'll earmark this and repost it next June. And having number four, having a high threshold power or FTP, you know, lactate threshold has is such a huge determinant on how we produce energy, whether it's aerobically or anaerobically. So having a high threshold, even though you're not riding at threshold, you're riding above it, it's going to help you be a stronger cyclist for hill climbs. Then my last comment on this is how do you climb? If you are a bigger rider, that doesn't mean that you can't be good at hill climbs. Yes, watts per kg matter, but I have a bunch of KOMs at 80 kgs versus other riders who are at 65 and 70 kgs. I actually, Landry made a really interesting comment to me about the White Oak KOM that I took, which is out in Boone, North Carolina. I took it by about 20 seconds. I was ripping that day after some deadlifts. And he said, man, I think your watts per kg are actually lower, but you clearly doled out the efforts at the right time. You want to be spending more energy on the steeper parts of the climb. When it evens out or has any downhill dips, that's when you try to recover. <laughs> Recovery might be at threshold, but pacing is so important. And Tom did a really good job of explaining why going too hard early on has such a high cost because of the oxygen deficit. Whereas once your body is more aerobically warmed up, going over threshold is going to have less of a cost. So using that to your advantage is going to help you save time on time trials and hill climbs and KOMs. So we all know don't start too hard, but the guide really highlighted that in a great way. Lastly, I would say if you need VO2 max help and you don't have a coach, check out our training pack. Sorry to shill you. The people who have used it have given me, I have about 10 emails lately that is, hey, this has been awesome. Not, not the workouts, but how to apply them, when to use them and how to execute them. And then if you haven't started lifting, don't do it right before hill climb season. But if you are getting ready for next year in 2023, start lifting now. The strength pack is killer. It's going to make you a faster, stronger cyclist. If you need help with your power files, check us out with a free power file analysis. If you need coaching, we have that. We have a ton of options. I want to see you at your fastest. You can get faster no matter what age you're at. Yes, Mark, even at age 70. He always asked me that on Instagram. Let's get faster together. Please tell your friends about the channel. Please like it. Please subscribe. That helps us. You guys came out in droves and got us over 3,000 people. So appreciative of that. Let's get to 4K. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.